From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the latest Ropecast. Hello, Peter. Hello, Roger. How are you doing? Fine, and you? Fine, thank you. Peter, I want to turn the tables on you today. Uh huh. You remember a little while ago, you asked me lots of questions about dictionaries. Yeah, and you answered them. Yeah, I tried. Well, very often students ask me questions which I can't answer. Questions about testing. Uh huh. English language testing. Right, and I think you know quite a lot about that. Well, fire away. What yeah. do you want to know? Well, first of all, are there any big name tests that everybody should be aware of? Well, let me start by saying that there are two big organizations that offer tests. Yeah. There's the Educational Testing Service (ETS) that's、um, U.S. based. Yeah. And then there's the Cambridge the Examination Brit- British Board, British-based one. Yeah. Right. And they each offer a range, a whole number of tests for different purposes. Yeah. Different levels as well, I suppose. Uh, different levels. But I think I'd have to stress the fact that they're also for different purposes. Right. So someone who wants to study in the United States presumably would do the American test or one of the American tests. Not necessarily, but well, maybe I can start by one example. The most famous test is, in fact, the TOEFL, and that's offered by the U.S.-based ETS testing、yeah. service. TOEFL is the test of English as a foreign language. Yeah. And that is accepted by most. If not close to all American universities, there are maybe a few that don't. But usually, if you have the TOEFL, then you can apply to study at an American university. Meaning, if you have a certain test score on the、oh, yeah. TOEFL, because you can't fail TOEFL, I guess. No, no, you can't. You get a score on it. I think you have a possible total score of 120 points. Okay, you could get I don't know ten points, but don't try and apply at Harvard University. They want I don't know a very high score for their students, and a small university may accept a lower score. So this is a test that gives you just a score,、yeah. and you always get a scorecard. You always get a certificate that says what you can do. And would someone wanting to study in another country also take the TOEFL test? Well, outside of the U.S., I guess that the Cambridge tests are more widely recognized. Oh yeah, but and Cambridge has a test that is sort of similar to the TOEFL, which is call, called IELTS.、Mm. IELTS, you pronounce it that way. And there again, you get a score. Looks a little bit different. So it's three point five, four, four point five, six, and that also gives an idea of your language abilities. And I guess different skills are involved as well.、Right? Well, they both test the same thing. They both test listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Yeah. And the IELTS is about three hours long, and the TOEFL test is four hours long. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty big. And where where would I have to go to take one of these tests? <laughs> First, you'd have to go online because you'd have to find a test center. Yes. So you'd either go to www.toefl.org or ielts.org and find a testing center and sign up. Yes. And, and、uh, pay a fee. Pay a fee. Yes, that should be around. I don't know. I didn't look recently, but it's around a hundred euros. And then you need to travel to the test center and take the test there. Right. Is there any way of avoiding traveling like that? Not really. The thing is, you can't take it online because they, <laughs> they don't know if it's you sitting at the computer.、Oh, of course, yeah. There's a famous caricature where a dog sitting in front of a computer says, <laughs> "On the internet, nobody knows you're a dog." <laughs> so that's the basic idea behind this.、Yeah. They need to know you and see you. They actually take a picture of you in the TOEFL test to identify you. But you have、um, here in Zabrukan, you have a test of English that、uh, students can take without going somewhere else. Well, that's another idea for students, but that's specifically for students at a university. That would be a test that is based at the university where they study. Yes. And sometimes these university language centers, like ours, are accredited by a larger system, which is called Unicert. Uh-huh. So what you would get in Saarbrücken or other universities is a Unicert exam,、uh, which may help you in your career, which you can 
show to a future employer, which, which will probably not be recognized if you want to enter a foreign university. All right. Well, I think that's about as much information as I can handle today. <laughs> Thanks, well, Peter. you can ask about tests anytime again. Okay, let's come back to that. Okay, bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>